Welcome to my channel guys. So this video is another episode of the Weird Movies and Curls, which is the series on my channel where, where I'm reviewing like a really weird and lately a pretty messed up movie as well while doing my hair and so today's video the hair products that i'm going to be using are the kinky curly products i have a not to the leave-in conditioner that i'm going to detangle my hair with first and then i'm going to slap some of this mousse in here to just kind of give my curls more definition and would normally use a gel from them but i just realized that i had ran out of gel and i have this um i have this foam it's not really for what I'm going to use it for, but I'm going to use it for what I use it for and hopefully it turns out okay. Anyways, lost my train of thought there for a minute. Yeah, the movie that we're going to be talking about today is a Japanese horror movie, Guinea Pig 5 Android of Notre Dame. In case you don't know, Guinea Pig is like a Japanese direct-to-video movies that are in no way related to each other, so it doesn't matter which one you watch first, one, two, three, four, five, um, or six, doesn't matter because um, the characters are not related and the storylines are not related. These movies are pretty short too. The runtime is usually just a little bit under an hour. Like this one I believe is like 51 minutes long or something. Yeah. And the first couple of guinea pig movies are basically like this straight up torture porn flicks that, that are basically meant to look like snuff films I guess. Um, one of those flower flesh and blood had sent poor Charlie Sheen panicking and calling the FBI because he thought it was like a real movie and somebody really got killed and dismembered on this table anyways so after the first two though the tone of this movie started to become increasingly more and more bizarre and surreal and by the time we get to Android of Notre Dame it's pretty damn weird so basically Oh, I forgot to tell you who like wrote and directed this masterpiece. How could I? And now my hands have product on now. So how am I going to get into my phone? So Guinea Pig, Android of Notre Dame was written by Yoshikazu Iwamani, Kazuhito Kuramoto, and Satoru Agura. And directed by Kazuhito Kuramoto. And it stars Toshihiki Kino, Mio Takaki, Tomoro Toguchi, Yumi Lori and Miss Suzu. So yeah, like I was trying to tell you all before, um, the plot for Android of Notre Dame is basically that there is like this little person, med scientist doctor, um, that has a sick sister. She's dying from some type of an illness and he wants to save her. So, so basically to do that, he runs experiments on dead bodies trying to find the cure for her and then one day moves on from dead bodies to experimenting on living human tissue to be more specific he like cuts off some guy's head and reanimates the head and does all kind of torture as well experiments it's all in the name of science um on this guy's reanimated head and then later on the guy's girlfriend also ventures in his lair when he runs all these cruel experiments and she becomes kind of a subject for the experiments as well so yeah that's the movie that's the plot so first of all i don't know what's up with that title because last time i checked this movie was more like a frankenstein story than a hunchback of notre dame variant unless i'm like missing something second of all this movie got on my nerves <laughs> like i wanted to like it I thought it's, it, a plot sounded insane, but it was so damn boring to watch. I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of a short to sit through in the beginning, especially. Like, everything about this movie in the beginning got on my nerve. And, like, the first half of this movie is literally just repeated scenes over and over of, like, this... Um, little person doctor cutting off some dead bodies like cutting off some cadavers and shit and there is some interesting gore involved in that but i don't know it just kind of got really tedious real quick watching him cutting up the cutting up dead girls bodies and the gore effects really wore off on me quick like it just got old real quick but you know what let's talk about some of the scenes from this movie that i did think were kind of fun in their own way 
yeah, let's talk about those. So we don't sit here and just be negative throughout this whole review. So like, there is a scene somewhere halfway through, but it's I'm not even gonna ask that. It's losing all hope for this movie and seriously contemplate it like turning it off um there is a scene where the uh little dwarf guy he turns on this person that has been like providing him with all these this cadavers for his experiments he turns on him and decides to kidnap him and turn him into the subject of his experiments right so there is like this scene where, where out of the blue sky the guy's legs just get cut off right from right under him. I'm not even sure how that happened. I guess there was some type of a booby trap <laughs> or something involved. Then all of a sudden the guy just falls. The dwarf guy looking at him all sinister like smiling. And the guy just falls and he don't got no legs. And it's not funny but it was really funny watching the scene. Because everybody's acting was just so damn atrocious in that scene. Like the little person guy he had like this kind of like a smirk or something on his face. And the guy whose legs got cut off. His facial expressions were fucking golden. His facial expressions was just so ridiculous. And I mean, like I said, it's not funny. The guy was cleared in a lot of pain. Both of his legs was just cut off. But the facial expression he was making, I don't know, just something about it. Like, it just cracked me up. His mouth was all crooked and shit. It was funny, okay? I'm over here struggling to open this bottle. So yeah, like I said, it's technically not funny, but I thought it was funny just because of how it was presented. Anyway, moving on to after a few hours of off-screen surgery later, the little person doctor, he presents to us his newest creation. There is like this reanimated head sitting on the, ta on the table, some wires attached to it. The whole idea of like there being a reanimated head on the table obviously immediately would think would make some people think reanimator well to me it reminded me of some other movie i can't put my finger on what movie it was but it reminded me of some like low budget sci-fi feature from the maybe like the 80s or something I can't for the life of me think exactly what it was. Oh my god, this just does not... I'll never buy this hair product again because it just does not want to come out of this fucking bottle. Like, it does not want to come out at all. So the talking, the poor talking head guy, he's sitting on the table and he, I'm guessing, is in a lot of pain. Once again, he's a severed head on the table. He's making all these facial expressions that are once again just... He's overacting so much and is so ridiculous to look at almost as ridiculous as me trying to get this damn product out of this fucking bottle like seriously what is going on here so he's making all these facial expressions and the little person doctor he decides to experiment on him some more or torture him some more so he just basically proceeds to like just really jack this guy's head up like he pokes it with stuff he cuts it he does a lot of fucked up shit to it. By the time he finished with it, the head is just looking so damn mutilated. And it's so fucked up. But it's also kind of funny. Because everything is just so damn ridiculous and so over the top. It's not funny in a it's meant to be funny kind of way neither. Because I don't think that this is classified as a horror comedy. But I think it's kind of unintentionally hilarious. You know what I mean? And unintentionally hilarious moments in horror movies... Sometimes could be some of the best ones. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. Okay, I am hating this hair product right here. This is about to be a review, not just for the movie, but for this bottle right here. Like, I am hating this with a passion. Because I can't get the damn product out of the bottle. So, later on, there is this scene where the talking head guy's girlfriend um, finds out that he's being held in this lab and she comes to see him. And there is this, at some point, there is like this really touching, sweet scene where she walks up to his severed, mutilated head and she like tries to kind of touch it and pick it up or something. And the severed, mutilated head is looking like it's in so much pain. And then by that point, it has been um, equipped with like robotic hands. 
that I guess are being operated by the severed head's consciousness. And the severed head, I guess, attempts to, like, hug his girlfriend. But the hands end up squeezing her throat a little too tight and he ends up strangling her. And it's also not funny, but it was kind of unintentionally hilarious to me. And then after that, the little person doctor takes the girlfriend's body in his lab and proceeds to experiment on her some more and cut her up, cut her open, take out her ribs one by one. And like, I'm not sure, I think she's still alive by that point. Because I could have swear I saw her move. So I think she's still alive. I can't be too sure. So anyway, that kind of stuff going on in this movie. There are also moments when the main character has like these inner monologues about, I think, the meaning of life or loneliness or something along those lines. So those are the moments about this movie that really got on my nerves as well. Because to me, that's when I felt like it was taking itself way too seriously. And I felt like they was pushing for some type of a deep meaning happening with all of that I, I just really wasn't there for it but you know um like i said the gore was kind of okay i mean they sure used a lot of um red stuff in this movie and then all of that has like a pretty damn sad ending because when the experimentation is over and the doctor manages to save his um sister he finds a way finally to like save her Turns out that she didn't even want to be saved. Like, she's accepted dying and she was at peace with it. She did not want to be brought back to life. So, that was kind of ironic and sad. Anyway, for the most part, this movie got on my nerves. It was just too... I don't know. The pacing was way off. The story, they dragged it out. Um, it wasn't much going on in this movie plot-wise. Like, it had a pretty freaky and pretty cool plot. But it just really dragged... The way that they executed it. And so at the end of the day, I just couldn't get into this movie. But I did enjoy some of the scenes in it where like the actors were overacting and I did like some of the gore. But as far as guinea pig movies go, like the those ones that are more like the weirder side than the snuff movie side, I would definitely say that the one that I reviewed previously on the channel here not that long ago, Mermaid in a Manhole was a lot more interesting to look at than this. As far as my rating for Android of Notre Dame goes, I guess I would give it like a, I don't know, I guess like a 4 out of 10 for me. I did like parts of it. I just was bored out of my life in all of the moments in between those parts that I kind of liked about it. So here's that. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you had seen Guinea Pig uh, 5 or 6 or whatever number it is, Android of Notre Dame, and definitely let me know what did you guys think about it in the comments. If you are the kind of person that watches those guinea pig movies for whatever reason that may be let me know in the comments what is your favorite one of those i guess and let me know in the comments also what other weird movies i should review on the weird movies and curls series on my channel in the future and if you are new here and are enjoying my reviews so far then then definitely go on ahead and give this video a like subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you wouldn't miss any future videos and i will see you in the next one okay bye